Okay, let's gear up. What are we talking about? I even drew something for today. So look at that. I drew that for today. So I drew a three and four chambered heart because we're talking about the circulatory system. It's my favorite of all, but it is a little bit complicated. So um, you definitely want to have your lecture notes out because you're going to be writing some stuff and you want to make sure that you've got it. You like, it makes sense. It's clear, you know, all that stuff. Okay. So we're going to go over to the slides. So get your slides out, wherever they may be. I was in a different spot. We'll go back up to the beginning. Okay. So, oh my gosh, circulatory system. So excited. What does it do? Who is it? Why do we care? Love the circulatory system. Think about your circulatory system. I always like, if I ever feel anxious or I just having a bad day, I just put my hand right here. Why? Because every day, all day, something this size is pumping gallons around my body and it never stops. Hearts are, your heart is about that big, size of a fist. All day, every day, I never have to worry. If I wake up in the middle of the night, it's always there for me, always. Love this system. And it turns out this system is really like, probably, well, I, I'm biased. I think it's the most important system, but it's like the highway, the communication highway of your body. So it carries gas. It, it works with the respiratory system, right? Cause it's carrying all those gases. It's carrying the oxygen. It's taking the waste, the carbon dioxide back. Cool. That's one thing, but it's also carrying things like hormones. We haven't talked about hormones. I don't know if we will but it's carrying hormones around your body. So all the signals in your body, all the chemical signals, it's carrying around neurotransmitters. You might've heard of dopamine and serotonin, don't write it down, but it's carrying signals and communication to the entire body. And most of the cells, we have what? Like 30 trillion cells, who knows? Most of your cells receive information from your circulatory system. They receive oxygen, they receive hormones. It's amazing. So. Those are a couple of the functions. Oh my gosh. And on here it says, um, what are the three major components or yeah, three major components. And a lot of this is filled in because there's so much detail that I just wanted to, you to keep writing notes, little tiny notes around it. So don't think this is like passive. Write down anything that you didn't know as, a, as we're speaking together. Okay, so the components, blood or liquid. So it's only blood, you'll see why, but it's only blood if you have things called arteries, capillaries, and veins. So if you don't have those, it's just called liquid. <laughs> There's a bunch of different liquids, hemolymph and all this other stuff, but I'm good with liquid. Um, so you gotta have blood vessels or tubes, some sort of tube system. You might've heard of arteries or veins, but you need tubes. They're not always called arteries and veins, but tubes, okay, blood vessels. And a, may, a way to move it, a pumping system, a heart. Okay. Now, does everybody have these components? No. They don't. So just a moment. We're kind of off our, we're not really in the lecture notes for a second, but um, just a moment to sort of kind of go back and just make sure we've got the main pieces as we move forward. What is its function? We know it's like the super communication highway, right? Of the whole body. Communicate using molecules, communicate using gases, communicate using hormones. Um, how does it relate to the respiratory system? Because it helps carry those gases around, doesn't it? So respiratory system and circulatory system are really intimately related. Um, do all animals have them? No. So we're getting back to the um, that metabolic rate thing. So if you are a sponge or a jellyfish and you're just sitting there, you don't have to have a circulatory system just diffuse. It's all the same. You don't need to have a bunch of blood or liquid moving around your body. Okay. So kind of the same idea. Uh, what components were good? And then how might me metabolic rate or endoectothermy relate to the needs of the respiratory system? So again, you're going to have specialized respiratory structures. Sorry, it should say of the circulatory system. Oops, I'll fix that. But it should say circulatory system. So, but it's the same idea. With all of these systems, the more 
metabolic rate you have, the higher the metabolic rate, the higher, the more that you're moving around, the more active you are, the more you will need to adapt and create systems. Okay. And it works for all of them, digestive, or it's, it's going to work in all. Okay. So I got to fix that. Sorry. All right. So who needs less? Don't write anything down, but who needs less? You know, if you don't move a lot, maybe you write that down. Like if you don't move a lot, if you want to get that metabolism piece, if you're not moving a lot, you don't need to have, if you're ectothermic, you're going to need less specialized systems because you don't have the demands, the oxygen demands, the energy demands that somebody with like you and me, like endothermic organisms. Okay. All right. Good, good. Okay, so I, the circulatory system components, the reason why I have this image on here was we said that you need to have a heart, but we also said you need to have some sort of vessels, okay, some tubes. So I wanted to name those. Arteries mean away. So arteries away from the heart and veins are back to the heart. So arteries carry gases and everything else away from the heart, like oxygen. That's why it's red. Usually they're red red meaning they're carrying oxygen and then usually veins are blue and they're carrying d or they're carrying carbon dioxide it's not a hundred percent there's a couple weird ones but we're not going to learn the weird ones we're just going to say it works most of the time okay um and then the liquid that has all the gases and that's usually blood or we'll just call it liquid okay beautiful now Hold on, arteries, capillary. Oh, on here it says capillary, so I just wanted you to know. So there was the artery, I'm gonna go back and slide. There's arteries, veins, and then the capillary bed is down here. So it says systemic capillaries down here at the bottom. Capillary beds are just, they're all over your body. And that's where they come little, 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 tiny, 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 capillaries are tiny. And they do all the gas exchange and they let out the hormones and stuff like that, okay? So no big deal, um, good. Okay, explain the two types of circulatory systems found in animals. So we have open and closed. And open circulatory system, this looks really complicated, doesn't it? So don't worry, let me, let's walk through it together. Like this is some very simple flatworm or something, okay? It's a very simple organism, invertebrate, doesn't have a backbone. They have a heart, okay? So open circulatory systems, you have a heart. In closed, you have a heart too, but in, in open, you have a heart. And that heart might be somewhere over here. So, um, oops. I'm gonna use it as purple, just, it's fine. But, so you have a heart, you have a pumping system. That heart is gonna pump the blood, right? And it's gonna pump it into these blood vessels. Now, that's fine and all, that's fine. And here it, go, here, here it goes down this way. But there's no, there's no connection between the artery and the vein. And it sort of just oozes out of the animal. I'm not kidding. It just oozes around. And then there's kind of these vein blood vessels kind of right over here, and they'll pick it up. But you don't have a closed system because the blood vessels sort of just end. I'm not even kidding. They're not connected to each other. So a closed system, the arteries go into capillaries, go into veins, and it's a nice, and it goes back to the heart, and it's a nice closed system. And what we see is these. The, the closed systems, you can have a much faster rate of return because it's closed, right? So you're not like just oozing the fluid, right? We actually don't call it blood when it's an open system, but don't worry about that. But when you have an open system, remember it just, the, the literally, it just sort of ends here and it'll just kind of ooze around some tissues and somehow get back in here into the vein and start heading on its way back to the heart. So it's a much slower loop. That means you can't be that active. So if you have an open system, you can't you either can't be very big or you can't have a very active you know, system. So you gotta be ectothermic and that kind of thing, okay? So open systems, and we'll see closed in a second. Um, open systems bathe the organs directly in blood. So you just sort of like let the liquid go. And I'm not gonna always say blood, we're gonna say liquid, just let it go. And it'll eventually make it back to the heart. Very low blood pressure, 
very hard to sprint down the street because you can't rely on when it's going to get back to the heart. Okay. Closed system, it's in a closed system. So if the, the heart beats faster, the blood's going to move faster. That's a closed system. Now you can spread down the street. Okay. Oops. Next slide. I must remove the drawings, the very bad drawings. Okay. Um, think about blood pressure. So low blood pressure is much higher in a closed system. Metabolic needs much higher in a closed system, right? Because you can, it can really get that oxygen moving. Now apply this to predicting which organisms, and we'll do that in lecture. We'll predict, we'll just, you know, we'll be like panda bear, you know, we'll predict, we'll predict, you know, who needs to have an open, who needs to have a closed system. It'll be fun. So don't worry if you don't have it all figured out. Um, what does this say? So we're talking about, I'm gonna move this out of the way. You probably don't see it. Closed circulatory systems, who has them? Um, vertebrates have them. So closed systems, it's sort of on the second, which groups have closed systems? It's sort of on the second, top of the second page. All vertebrates. So every once in a while, it, um, there's a few special invertebrates like squid and octopus that have a closed system but mostly it's vertebrates. Mostly it's those with a backbone have a closed system. Why? Because they're moving around. Yeah. So um, they're moving around. What are the advantages of a closed system? They're more efficient. Um, they can find blood to the vessels. They don't just kind of ooze out um, and they direct the blood much better. Okay, very good. And this is actually an octopus sitting inside a clear um, container because octopus can change colors. Octopus are so amazing. Um, they can change colors um, depending on their uh, background. And I, I, I've read a couple books about this. It's actually pretty amazing. It's many, many different types of cells that mimic the background for both texture and color. Oh. Anyway, it's kind of weird, but earthworms also have a closed circulatory system. We don't know why earthworms are so, they're part of the annelid group, the annelid phylum. We don't know why they're so complicated, but they are. Who knew? Okay, so there are different types of closed circulatory systems, different types of closed circulatory systems. Now we're talking about closed. Remember, all backboned vertebrates. We're doing closed, and so we're going to be starting to look at how many chambers the heart has, how many chambers the heart has. So you can have two-chambered, three-chambered, or four-chambered, okay? The simplest closed circulatory system has a two-chambered heart. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna name those right now. So I recommend writing it down. Okay, why well, have a circulatory system to move stuff around, right, you know? Okay, two-chambered heart of fishes was the first vertebrate heart to evolve. Okay, cool. So you've got this nice closed circulatory system. You can have blood, you can be moving around. They are ectothermic, so you know, they, they're active, but you don't need, you don't have huge demands. So let's look at this. So you have the heart. Now, it only has two chambers. What do I mean by two chambers? Let me, let me show you these. Here's the heart right here, okay? And what I'm gonna do is the two chambers, the first chamber, this is called the ventricle. This chamber right here, that's in green. That's called the ventricle. And the, um, the way it's spelled is down below there. And here's the atrium. All right, check this out. It's kind of down below here. This is a two-chambered heart. You have a ventricle and you have an atrium. The ventricle pushes, right? It pushes the blood and the atrium receives it. It's a very simple system. And so what'll happen is that ventricle will push towards the gills. Remember the gills are where we're picking up oxygen, dropping off all the waste. We'll pick up the oxygen and then we'll go to the entire body and um, lay, lay all of the, the good, gases, the good um, oxygen to the tissues of the body, to the little fins, to every, you know, everywhere all over that little fish body. And then that blood will go into the veins, okay? Into the veins, that blood will go into the veins and go back to the heart, okay? So this is called a two-chambered heart. It's very simple, it works fine, it's great. We're gonna see that there are improvements upon it, but for the fish, this is awesome, okay? Closed system, what's next? Closed system. Okay, I find this drawing, this image, 
to be troublesome. So I actually drew it for you. So don't, <laughs> I'm a bad drawing, but I feel like this is very hard with all the different numbers and I, I didn't find a better image. So um, we're gonna look now at, we're still looking at closed systems. We're looking at three chambered hearts, three chambered hearts. So as we look, at organisms, at animals that get more and more metabolic needs, we're going to see that the chambers of the heart go up and we'll figure out why that is. But we're going to get a more complicated heart system. The heart is getting more complicated. And that's to, to deal with the demands of high metabolic rate, okay, high oxygen needs. So the three chambered hearts are next. So we looked at two with the fish. Now we're going to look at three with amphibians, a few reptiles, okay? So amphibs and a few reptiles. So this is like, cool, we're gonna get a three. I mean, this is still a major innovation. It's really awesome. Um, but we're gonna see it with the with um, amphibians are ectothermic, reptiles are ectothermic. I'm not putting birds in that group right now. Um, so, so we're gonna see this. It's still a major innovation. I'm gonna show it to you on the next slide. This is a Michelle drawing. Sorry about the little bit of blurriness. I also have it here. You can see it here. Okay, so I want to explain a three-chambered heart. Don't worry about the four-chambered right now, but I put it next to it so you can kind of contrast them. So now let's first find the, the chambers. Okay, I've got chamber one here. This is an atrium. Chamber two, this is an atrium. So you have two atria. You have these two top chambers, right? And then you have a ventricle down below. That's number three. Okay, so that's the three chambers. So there's one, two, okay, this separates them. One, two, and three chambers, okay? So you have three chambers. So let's talk about what, how that works, okay? So, and you do, you do wanna know this. So you're gonna like, stay with me here. Um, the blood is gonna be coming from the body to the heart, okay? So it's got all the waste. It's got all the waste. So it's gonna come back to the heart. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes into the heart, okay? and that's from the body, it's gonna come into the heart and it'll come down here into the ventricle and it's blue because it's got a bunch of carbon dioxide, a bunch of waste, okay? Now, that is gonna go, the ventricle's gonna pump, right? And the pump ventricle pushes out, right? So the ventricle's gonna push out to the lung. That blood is blue, right? It doesn't have good oxygen, doesn't have all the good stuff, the nutrients got a bunch of waste. It's going to go to the lung and here's my waste. Here you go, lung. Here's my waste. Get rid of it. Thank you. I will pick up good oxygenated blood. It's got a whole bunch of oxygen in it. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to return to the heart and I will return to the heart and go back down into the ventricle. Now I'm in the ventricle. Nice, beautiful oxygenated blood has all these great nutrients in it. The problem is what else is down there? Look at that third chamber you have the, the blood that was returned from the body, okay? So they're gonna mix, and I'm gonna do a purple color because it's not super oxygenated anymore. It's purple because it's got both types. So it's purple down here. And then that ventricle will pump again, and that will go out to the body, okay? That's gonna go out to the body. And I'm drawing it as purple because it is it is has oxygen in it, but it also has the waste. And that's the way it works. However, and this will go down into the little capillary beds and we'll go back to the heart. This is a closed system. So we're gonna have it, we're gonna draw it as a nice closed system. This is the body here. We're gonna pick up the waist and we'll go back to the body. You know, so we've got these two nice, very nice closed system. This is a nice closed system. It is a double circuit. I'll show you what the two circuits are, but you can see them as circles, right? Two circles, that's a, that's a double circuit. Okay. But the problem is the mixing in that, that chamber three, okay? The mixing in the ventricle is a problem, right? Because we just went out to the lung to get all the good oxygen and it mixed back again and now it's purple. So that is how amphibians do it. It's great. It's a great system. It works for them. They're ectothermic. It's fine. Everything's good. Let's look at what happens with mammals and birds a few like crocodiles are weird, but bird, what I want you to remember is birds and mammals, they do it. They have high oxygen demands, high me metabolism. This is, and they're endothermic, and this is what they need to do. The, um, the blood is coming 
hold on, let's name the chamber. Sorry about that. So there's one, two, I should have put that in the drawing, three, that's a three, and four. Okay, so we've got four chambers now. You have two atria up top, atrium, atrium, and then you have a ventricle and a ventricle. So you have an extra ventricle now. Okay, now let's see what's happening. So blood comes from the body. Oops, can I draw this? All right, blood comes from the body. It's not, it doesn't want to draw. It's really crabby right now. It's, I'm having a crabby, what happened? Okay, we're going to go back. It's okay, we got this. So um, it's coming from the body. Here it comes. It's blue. Why is it blue? Because it's got a bunch of carbon dioxide. That's cool. Waste comes into the heart. Here it comes. It's blue, remember? Now it's going to be blue right here. And then the ventricle is going to pump. Remember the ventricle pumps blood out. So it's going to plump it to the lung. Here we go over to the lung. My lung is triangular. I'm going to draw this lung a little bit better here so you can see it because it got blurry. Okay. Yes, that's, that triangle is the lung. What are we going to do in the lung? We're going to pick up some good oxygen. And so that oxygenated, beautiful, lovely red coming back to the heart goes down into this ventricle. Now, here's the cool thing. Because we have a fourth chamber now, we don't mix. So we stay red. Does everybody see it? Because there's a little separator right here between these two ventricles, that little separator, that was a major innovation for animals right there. That's it. That's all you need is that just that tiny little separation has a really cool name, which we're not going to worry about. But that little separator makes it so that when I go to the body, when I send this blood to the body, what color is it? Entirely red. Draw this. Okay, draw this out. And then I'll drop, I'll deliver all my nice oxygen and I'll pick up the waste and I'll come back. And this is a double circuit. Okay, now what do I mean by a double circuit? I'm going to actually go over the double circuit. I can do it in either one of these two. We have a nice double circuit in both of these situations. Um, both situations are a double circuit here, okay? So both three and four have a, a double circuit. Uh, two chambered hearts do not have a double circuit. So let me show you what a double circuit is, okay? You're doing great. I know this is complicated. So the double circuit, let's take the first circle. This is one circuit and it's called the systemic circuit. I'm gonna put, for the systemic circuit, I'm gonna put an S on it. This is the systemic circuit. What does that mean? It's blood to the body. Systemic is body, okay? Another circuit is called the pulmonary circuit. I'm gonna put a P on it and P is for pulmonary or lungs, okay? Cool, that's a double circuit. So you've got a systemic circuit and a pulmonary circuit. Go ahead and label your drawing. You're doing good. All right. What does the systemic circuit mean? It means I'm going to take the blood around the body. I'm going to take the blood around the body, deliver my contents, deliver my nutrients, deliver my oxygen around the body. And I'm going to pick up the waste and come back to the heart all over the body. That's the systemic loop. What am I doing in the pulmonary loop? I'm going to take the blood with a, with a pulmonary loop, I'm gonna take the blood to the lungs, pick up good oxygen, pick up good oxygen, whoa, that's an arrow, and then go back to the heart. Do you see how they're different? One is going to the lungs to pick up oxygen, returning to the heart, and it's actually, we're dropping off waste too, right? So we're going to the lungs, drop off waste, pick up oxygen. The systemic circuit is going to the body, dropping off good oxygen, picking up waste, okay? You can do this with the three or four chambered heart. Very complicated. We'll make sure we go over it. I hope you drew it. We'll go over it again. But super awesome. Look at the major innovation that we're talking about here. This is huge. Look at that heart. Love the heart. Um, I find this also a little bit hard to look at. But what the, the um, drawings that you want to look at, probably because I didn't draw it and I'm super visual. Um, this is the fish heart. Remember, it's only got two chambers. So we move the blood from the body through the gills, and then it just kind of goes around and goes back, okay? Um, the three chamber, don't even worry about this one, okay? Three chambered heart for amphibians and a lot of reptiles. We've got blood returning to the heart, 
Now it's going to go pump out to the lungs. That lung blood is going to come back to the heart, but don't forget the ventricle. There's only one, so it's going to mix. And that mixed blood will go to the body and it should be purple, not red. Okay. With mammals, you've got four chambers. So we've got the body, it's down here in the corner here. You've got the blood returning from the body to the heart. That ventricle will send it to the lungs. The lungs will pick up nice, good oxygen, return it to the heart. But now I have a separate ventricle. I don't, the blood doesn't mix. Nice oxygenated blood travels around my body, comes back to the heart. So we've got two circuits, pulmonary circuits, the lungs, systemic circuits, the body. Woo! That was a lot of work. That was a lot today. Don't worry, we'll do it again in lab. You're doing great. Oops. Um, okay, discussion, which we will do. Um, which is the most expensive to maintain and build? Interesting. Which is the most efficient? So hopefully you can see that the four-chambered heart is very efficient. Um, why are there so many kinds? That's a great question. We should save that for class. Why are there so many? Why? Why so many kinds? Why open and closed? And why are all these things around? Um, why have open and closed? Why have a two, three, and four chambered heart? Seems like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a great question. Okay, look back at slide 11. What is a double circuit? Outline the pulmonary systemic, don't worry about the coronary. I'm crossing off the coronary. Outline the pulmonary and systemic circuit, right? We had those two circuits where we had the S and the P in green. Gosh, I'm a visual learner. Hopefully you drew it. Maybe I'll ask you to bring your drawing to class or something, I don't know. And then you can look at this YouTube video. It's a little, it's okay, no, it's good, it's fine. But look at the YouTube video and um, find the four chambers of the heart, relate them to the circuit, okay? And I think that's it, we'll see you in class. Big, big chapter. Good job this week, and I will see you soon.